shortly before we went on the air, news broke that O.J. Simpson had died at the age of 76. And um, clearly, you, you cannot talk about O.J. Simpson without mentioning him being acquitted of, uh, uh, of a double murder in the 1990s that changed absolutely everything in, in the world of uh, media, in our world, in the United States of America, the way that we view celebrity, the way that we view uh, criminal cases, the way that we view justice, the way that we view everything. And I will never forget uh, where I was on the day that O.J. Simpson was on the run from the police here in Southern California. And I will never forget that day as long as I live. And uh, I was graduating from the Medill School of Journalism in uh, June of 1994 on this day when uh, my folks um, were there for the graduation. So was my brother, sister-in-law. Um, and we were all out to lunch, uh, a late lunch for, with um, uh, a fellow colleagues of mine who just graduated from Medill. And we were in a bar and, um, and uh, having lunch. And up came the images. And it was in the middle of an NBA Finals game between the Knicks mm -hmm. and the Spurs. Yeah. And the Rockets. Pardon me. The Knicks yeah, and the Rockets. Knicks Rockets. Um, yeah, and, yeah, Knicks and Spurs is when I turned 30. <laughs> um, so I, I will never forget that series. Because it was of interest in Chicago, to be honest, you were, where, where I was, because everybody thought, had Michael not retired, mm -hmm. they would have been in that series. Um, and the Knicks finally got past the, the Jordanless Bulls. And um, there was a split screen. And you just couldn't believe the guy who you knew as one of the all-time great running backs in the history of the NFL. And you couldn't believe that the guy that you now knew as a sideline reporter for NBC Sports and uh, a movie actor. Mm -hmm. The guy from the Hertz commercial uh, who was trying to make pitchman. his flight, right? Jumping One of the most famous pitchmen. Yeah. Jumping over, he was jumping over um, chairs in the airport yeah. Yeah. to go well, make his flight. The airport. Yeah. That that guy uh, was on the run from the police. And why would he run from the police if he was innocent? And so we were all grappling with the fact that this guy, it, it sure looked like he had just killed his wife and a waiter from a nearby restaurant who was friendly with his wife and uh, was returning, I guess, a pair of glasses, as we learned later on. Yeah. Wrong place, wrong time. Ron Goldman. May he rest in peace as well. Lord, it seems like it, right? With Nicole Brown Simpson. And uh, I'll never forget where I was that day. I think we all, if you're old enough. Yeah, you right. remember. Yeah, I was in a bar in Pittsburgh. Um, walk in, and I'm like, why is, this, why is the game not on? What? what? Yeah. And then we just all huddled around this thing like in disbelief right and he was and and he was on the phone al cowlings was in was in his driving, friend was in the car with him and he's driving and yeah. and and he was saying suicidal things yeah it was crazy it was crazy and you it, 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 the every every news organization had broken in live broken and in. on and then the police didn't want to stop him they just kept they, they kept followed him to they see just where he followed was going, him see where or? he was going yeah. And folks were on the freeway, like, cheering them on, too. It was weird. Well, yeah, the like fact he... that people had time to make signs and yeah. get to certain locations. Yeah. That, was, that was, especially now that I live here, back then California was just like a right. whatever. I right. didn't Same. believe it was a real place. But to think that in this type of traffic, people could get to these spots, make yeah. signs and hold Wasn't them up. Wasn't he going like, to go to Mexico and they turned around because well, he wanted to go home first? They, 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 there, was a, there was money and, and, yeah, and had, a disguise in there, cash, right? And clothes? And gun, yeah. It was, it was just... I was in the eighth grade and uh, a, a friend of mine was over to watch the NBA Finals. And remember they went, they went small, small box, box. Right. on the finals. <laughs> on the game. And then the... The larger uh, view was the chase. the chase. And then Bob Costas is doing the game and going back and forth. I think it was Marv doing the game. And Bob was doing the Bob was doing the, the studio. studio. Studio, yeah, yeah. But on and location, Marv, it was And then they threw it back. And then Brokaw threw it back to yeah, Marv. And crazy. Marv is just like, we will update you as conditions warrant. Pause. We're here in the third quarter in Madison Square Garden. And it was just it weird was and crazy. wild. Yeah, so that and, and, and everyone started calling everyone else. 
or speaking to everyone else saying, did you see what OJ's doing? Like, OJ yeah. killed his wife. Yeah. I was and somebody bar. else. Because, again, why DJ. else would he be running exactly. from the law? And the crazy thing is when the trial hit, they hardly brought up the chase. Right. It was one of my memories because I watched the preliminary hearing every minute of it in Lance Ito's courtroom. And you remember SNL would be doing skits on it. And yep. didn't Jay Leno have like the dancing Ito's yes. on, yeah. on the Tonight Show? Yeah. And, um, and that's when the ticker, the bottom line ticker was born because CNN kept giving updates, updates. on other news because they didn't want to break away from the nonstop 24-7 nonstop. coverage yeah. of it. And that's when, um, you know, um, Roger Cossack and Greta Van Susteren became yes. famous because they were legal experts to tell us about everything that yeah. was going on. And, and people figured out what DNA was. It was our first it was experience with that. Right. And so um, the preliminary trial, once I graduated from the Medill School of Journalism, I took an internship on, at the CBS Evening News in New York City. I lived at the 92nd Street Y for the summer and took two trains to Black Rock every day yeah. to go to work and answer phones uh, on the set of the CBS Evening News with Dan Rather and Connie Chung. Wow. And basically, my summer was filled with watching the preliminary trial with Lance Ito and uh, answering phones of people livid across the country to give me, uh, to tell me three things. One, OJ is guilty. Two, OJ is innocent. Three, where is the Price is Right or my soap opera? <laughs> they were like complaining, like, why are we covering this thing gavel to gavel? Yep. What? Where? Where is the Price is Right? Where is my soap opera? And I'm like, I, I would just transfer them to some other line for that, because the phones were ringing off the hook. It was crazy. I, I will never crazy. ever the country forget it it really and did. so just to bring this kind of full circle a little bit here is because you cannot talk about oj simpson without mentioning the double murder in brentwood california of his wife and the waiter ron goldman you cannot do that unless of course you're the heisman trust who tweeted out today you know, they mourn the passing of O.J. Simpson. We extend his our sympathy to his family. And again, you know, there, this man did pass away to cancer, and 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 obviously, somebody dying is not something to celebrate. But how do you not mention? And if you're Reggie Bush and you see that, you're like, oh, he's got his Heisman, but you know, where's mine? Because O.J. did serve 12 years for something completely unrelated to this. That's one thing to say. But we have to remember the families affected. And in that regard, a reporter from NBC News, Daniel Arkin, reached out to Ron Goldman's dad, Fred, who was, by the way, the Goldman family was the face of... Yep. of um, the normalcy amidst the maelstrom of insanity that this is family had lost their son. Well, then the civil trial that filed. Exactly. That followed and the quote from Ron Goldman's father, Fred, about the passing of OJ, quote, the only thing I have to say is it's just further reminder of Ron being gone all these years. It's no great loss to the world. It's a further reminder of Ron's being gone. And I just wanted to mention that to finish our conversation on this subject matter. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.